As if BX is the greatest thing ever, people that don't like it can suck it. We are back. Welcome to another episode of the Fantasy 40 Podcast. I am John DeBari with my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker, Andrew Burke, MIA, once again, Pacific Northwest. Today, we are going a little topical, talking about uh, something that's all over the Twitter sphere right now. It is Scott Fishbowl Week, kicked off on Monday. We are recording this Wednesday morning, so we're going to talk about our teams a little bit in these early drafts, anything weird we've noticed in other ADPs, and Breakdown, scoring, all that kind of stuff. So just kind of a topic of the moment thing. Talking about all things Scott Fishbowl. How you liking your team so far, Walker? Uh, <laughs> uh, we uh, we spent a couple minutes for hitting the record button here talking about our teams, and I finally just said, let's just let's just get going because we're gonna have to go through this all over again. And Suffice to say, uh, my team looks nothing like any of the mock drafts that I did before the Scott Fish Bowl, which clearly shouldn't shock anyone and didn't really shock me. But um, I was hoping something happened to me early, and it didn't, and it changed the course of history for me in the SFBX. (laughs) So we'll see how that pans out in the end. And you and I went in totally different directions, it looks like, early on uh, in our drafts. And you mentioned Burke at the beginning of this, and it's unfortunate that he's not on this episode today because uh, Mr. Burke is very upset that he did not get invited back into the SFV this year. And I think I figured it out. It's because he is actually a Bigfoot and Scott Fish couldn't find him. It, literally, he just he went off the radar, you know, and modern society can't locate Coach Burke 82. So you know, maybe if he rejoins society he can be in the sfb 11 next year so just a word of advice to our friend the ff bigfoot um that should uh, be it yeah yeah get your shit straight but no it's been exciting i I think i wrote in a tweet that it's like the kickoff of the fantasy football season for me and i've had the pleasure this is my third year of being in this you you preceded me um i believe you have at least four to your credit and just exciting man it just gets you thinking about it again like we do podcasts and talk about it but drafting and actually having to formulate a team and with Scott Fish's scoring, it, it makes you really, um, you know, dig in and, and you just want to win. You know, at the end of the day, you just, you want to stand out in, in the crowd. There's, there's tons of analysts in here that, you know, known to listen to for years. There's fans here that, you know, I, I won't nor will never want to know at the end of the day, but you know, they're, they're swinging as well. It's just a, just pretty cool. So shout out to the Scrabble division, which I was put in because as you know, I'm a wordsmith. So it only <laughs> served Scott Wright to put me in the Scrabble division and you, sir, I believe ended up in the Etch-a-Sketch division and I've seen exactly why yeah. that took place as well. So how are you feeling about the SFBX? Yeah. You know, you had mentioned it. One of the, the fun thing about it to me is just getting to see other people's because, you know, like you said, the scoring's tweaked. People come at it from all different angles. So I like to see all the different roster constructions and all that. And for me, it's fun to see guys like you had mentioned, guys who you've seen their names on, you know, all over the, the fantasy industry. And this guy's for ESPN and CBS. And, you know, they're making good money doing it. And then you look at some of these <laughs> dog shit teams they put together. and You're like, oh, this guy did that. Like I shared in the uh, in the one of our DMs earlier, I don't know if you saw it, Michael Fabiano's team. Ah, oh, no, I did not. It's it's in the off the rails DM. It's awful. So oh. it's just funny to see him and like I don't think he thinks it's bad, but even the way he pitched it, he's like, oh, you know, these these certain guys go a little earlier than usual, and he didn't take anyone earlier than usual. It's just a bad team. That it, that's I look forward to that. Just being Mister Negative, seeing some of these real trash teams that people put together who you know a lot of people go to for fantasy advice every weekend and you're like oh that's what you're going with that's terrible you so, you, dro- you drove me to look for this infamous uh dm and i cannot find it uh for the life of me it's in but, the off the rails uh, yeah i looked for it and i don't know when you sent it i went back like two days but uh you know we, no, we have we have the technology that we could look at this 8 30 this morning very easily do you not do screenshots like you do like the randomest, like you'll write it out in the group chat group chat. I, I sent the link to his tweet. Oh, you were very true. Okay. You proved me wrong, sir. It is right here. <laughs> it is. Earth, Galladay. I mean, look, given the scoring, James White is your RB three without Brady and Cam Newton now. Terrifying. Listen, I'm just gonna, just gonna shoot you straight here, John. 
James White might be my RB1 <laughs> going into week one if things don't go according to plan on, on my team. But you're right. There's no there's no reaches here uh, That if that's what he is saying. I mean, tight end's going earlier than expected. He got Ertz in the third round. <laughs> and he got Higby in the eighth. Like, he, yeah. his, his I mean, league is there. averaging – he's averaging one a round. Like, uh, no one's reaching, sir. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, pretty impressive. And there's only running back 34 going by the ninth round, like you said before we recorded. I had 13 running backs going – First twenty one picks of my draft alone. I mean, I don't know how deep we are now. I haven't I haven't looked at the latest update for running backs, but I was not a happy camper with pick twenty two, you know, when every single guy I wanted to possibly field as an RB one went. So yeah, it's just interesting perspectives, you know, that people take I, I again mentioned to you that I didn't do the, the homework necessary. You know, I I failed to grab, you know, Addison's ranking sheet or projection sheet or whatever the heck yeah. it's called. You know, I'm just I was too busy to do so, I should have done it just to have some semblance of understanding. I'm I'm over here trying to sort by 2019 stats on on my fantasy league and you know you know look it up on Twitter and I'm in the, the 103 group chat and I'm, I'm just trying, I'm playing catch up <laughs> already and it's it's not going uh, according to play it so um the beauty of this is it's all for charity. It gives us something to talk about, it gives us something to rub Berg's nose in, you know, for the entirety of the 2020 hopeful NFL season. Right, so let's dive into it a little bit with our teams. I put out a tweet on the on the 40 handle saying oh. whose team through five was better. And we're a little beyond that now, but a roaring 30 votes poured in uh, during that rough 15 hour I think clock because I wanted to be done before we recorded today and I was a runaway favorite with (laughs) two-thirds of the vote Uh, it looks like I got 20 of those 30 votes if my math serves me correct actually it looks like 19 of those 30 votes so I destroyed you in the first five rounds or six rounds wherever the heck we're at six rounds when I believe that was largely on whatever methodology you were using to draft your team early on. So why don't you, or you want me to, since I have it for me, I'll run down your first six and then I need to know where your head was at. Okay. In this poll, John came screaming out of the gates with Drew Brees at the 109, which everyone and their mother has said that like Drew Brees is the king of Scott Fishbowl scoring for quarterback. So I understood why you went there. I was under the misnomer that I might have been able to get him coming back in the second round, which clearly did not happen in my league. And at the well. end of the second? Although I did. I did. He was so low in the ADP and hoping that maybe people devalued quarterbacks a little bit. And I don't know. I was. I was hoping and praying. I'm still happy. Jeff, like, Jeff Donovan me. got him in the third. If you'd want to be disgusted with your Oh, team. his team is unbelievable. But he oh. was, it was 3-1. Three, three, so, you know, take him in a second. Put some put some respect on his name, Jeff Donovan. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't be the guy like I am that takes the guy second at the swing just to teach him a lesson. So you can say you got him in the third. You got him in, <laughs> you got him in the, two, the two plus round. But, yeah, McCaffrey running back. I forget who he took. And then Breeze, yeah, I'm pretty envious of of that start but let's get back to you drew Brees at the 109 dalvin cook at the 2.04 todd Gurley at 3.09 my boy carson wentz at 4.04 steady kirk cousins at 5.09 and then devin singletary at 6.04 three quarterbacks three running backs through six rounds what the fuck were you thinking that that was my plan the whole time that was uh yeah monday morning i recorded on uh sheps's new podcast toilets to titles i believe and that's what they said they they were asking you know what's your strategy going into it and that was my plan the whole time i was going to go three and three possibly four and four and then pound wide receivers the rest of the way and i'm going to finish with tight ends unless some incredible value falls to me so it, it, it played out like i did um i know you despised my kirk cousins pick um what did i pick him fifth fifth round and i don't disagree i wish i had waited and took a running back uh in that cousin spot we had mentioned before we started recording i wanted to try to get david montgomery who was still on the board at that time and another guy i had my eye on was let me look down the list here possibly deandre swift who both went in between uh, my Kirk cousins pick in the fifth and devin singletary in the sixth i would have liked both of those guys over singletary and who knows if cousins would have gone in that stretch instead and then i could have gone with i probably would have taken jimmy garoppolo at six so what i felt better 
better with Montgomery and Garoppolo instead of Cousins and Singletary? Yeah, but Cook does catch a handful of balls, so I get that little bump with the the Cousins Cook stack, so I don't hate it as much as I could have otherwise. Now, the reason I went with another quarterback there was we went quarterback hot and heavy early. Like you had mentioned that RB run your league went in. We had six quarterbacks taken in the first 13, so I thought it was going to keep going. So kind of where it slowed down a little bit there, I was hoping that my pick would spark another quarterback run because people didn't take a bunch of quarterbacks since then. So I was anticipating to start a little run in between my picks, thus allowing some of these running backs to fall to me at the sixth round, but it failed miserably. I mean, to, to try to make you feel a little better about yourself, um, your your Wentz Cousins picks in the fourth and fifth rounds in my draft, Wentz and Cousins actually went back to back at picks 32 and 33 overall. Nice. So they were... Both late third round picks that you got in the fourth and fifth round. 40 and 57. Now, who could you have taken instead of Drew Brees at 109 running back wise? And would you have changed now when you got Wentz and Cousins in the fourth? No. Running backs that went after I took Brees Mm -hmm. went Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, and then I took Cook was the third guy off. And honestly, Cook, I I don't like the holdout talk or the injury concern, but whatever. (laughs) Swing for the fences. Go big or go home. He's probably who I would have taken at 109. He went in the first round in most leagues when I looked at uh, the Fishbowl app, the Josh ADHD thing that he put Mm -hmm. out. So Cook, I actually got it a value too at 204. He's going in the first in most leagues. So he's probably who I would have taken there anyway, and I sure as hell was probably not going to get Breeze at 204. So I, I, I'm very happy with how that played out. Unless one of the top two quarterbacks or McCaffrey or Barkley fell to me at nine, I was planning on taking Breeze in the first the whole time. Well, ironically enough, the team that had 1.09 in my league, <clears throat> which was your spot, took Dalvin Cook. At 1.09. So (laughs) then they got Nick Chubb at 2.04, who I know you love and I think can be amazing in this scoring. And you know that I'm not as scared of Kareem Hunt under this new regime as as last year under Freddie Kitchens. So that start, pretty impressive. Let's look at this young man's team and see how you feel. Oh, the 109? Yeah, I'm not going to go pick by pick. But he's through eight picks now. And he has, I'm going to start with the running backs because they were his first two picks. He, Dalvin Cook and Nick Chubb, which is a hell of a one-two punch. He took Devin Singletary as well. Got Zach Ertz at tight end. Stephon Diggs and Calvin Ridley as his wide receivers. And then his quarterbacks are Derek Carr and the aforementioned Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't, like I said, I'm, I'm shying away from tight ends myself. And I don't like who are the two wide receivers. I don't. I dis, I hate Diggs this year. Yeah, I'm not buying Diggs this year. Uh, maybe things change a year from now if that receiving core looks a little different. And you know, I still think John Brown's the much better value to be had this year. So I agree with you. Calvin Ridley, extremely appealing. Everyone and their mother is already calling this guy the 2020 Chris Godwin. Yeah, like, settle down. All right. Yeah, settle down. There's one fucking Chris Godwin. Everyone right. zigging on him. I'm going to zag. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not buying it. I, I. I get he's. You know, it's a Atlanta has a very narrow target tree, so they're going to throw the ball 600 times. They have a ton of vacated targets with uh, Hooper and Oh Freeman, and so the, they have targets to go around. Could he be the beneficiary of that? I could see how it happens, but yeah, with everybody else on him, I'm backing off. I'm not buying at this price. So to do the same exercise in my league, drafting from the 103 spot, here's well, what... Tell my team first before you... Oh, 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 yes, yes. So out of the 103, as previously stated, Chris McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley were snatched from my dead hands as I wanted to go running back so bad at three, and they were the only two I was willing to take uh, at 103. I was just praying. I did a Saquon Barkley no matter what. Post-it note on Twitter, it was supposed to happen. Got stolen out from under me. Ironically enough, the guy that uh, had two wrote me he was this close, and I know we do an audio podcast, but these fingers are almost touching to taking (laughs) Zika too. He said he was right there, and he just couldn't do it. Um, He was scared of McCarthy, and I'm like, God damn it, Mike McCarthy just fucked me again, son of a bitch. Should have had to take my But ran aside. Okay, Patrick Mahomes at 103. The richest man in the NFL, and kudos to him. Uh, couldn't have broke at a better time. I went Deshaun Watson coming back. I went 
what I am now terming the robust QB strategy because why not? I went bold on our AFC South prediction saying Deshaun Watson could be the QB one overall this year. And I think without Nuke there, he is going to spread it around. David Johnson there, they're going to be throwing it a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty comfortable there. Wanted a running back. Wasn't one worth a shit. 13 running backs went in the first 21. So I pivoted again. Then I'm just going to run through these. Tyreek Hill to give me the Mahomes stack. I went rookie running back Jonathan Taylor at the 410, who was the 23rd running back taken already in the fourth round. Grab me a little DJ Moore coming back, who I think has shades of Mike Thomas with Teddy Bridgewater, just peppering him with eight yard reception after reception. You know, just tickling those first down strings every single time he catches the ball. And then said, let's just keep with this rookie theme because they're the only ones left. And I went J.K. Dobbins in the six. So I am Robust QB, rookie RB is my team <laughs> right now. And if you ask me, I was going the opposite way. I was going running back heavy. Like you said, I was just hammering running back early. Like I think everyone on Twitter said that they were going to do given this scoring. Take QBs late, take receivers super late. And then like you and I said, wait on tight end. Well, I took two, I took two receivers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had two receivers in the top 10. That was wide receiver four and wide receiver eight overall selected. So I was the idiot taking wide receiver early when there wasn't necessary. I did get QB one and QB six. I think it's a little insulting that Deshaun Watson was QB six in, in this draft. He went after, maybe not insulting, but Dak Prescott, Drew Brees, and Russell Wilson. I understand it, but I don't know. I don't think Deshaun Watson should be outside the top five in anyone's list, regardless of the scoring. So hit me with it. What do you, what do you, what do you think? I mean... When you explain it and how your draft broke, I get it. On paper, I don't love it. But look, if you're going to go wide receiver early, at least you've got the Mahomes Hill stack, which is arguably top quarterback in the league and his number one wide receiver who is explosive as hell. So if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Uh, You know, we've debated Watson when we talked about the AFC South. I am not as high on him as you this year. I think his weapons are shit. Taylor's got all the upside in the world. Uh, DJ Moore, we I think it was before we started recording, so I, I heard something that he gets a ton of first downs as a receiver. I we didn't we were talking about trying to even find that information somewhere, so who knows how true it is, but I, I could see it, and, and he's another guy with tons of upside, so I, I get where you went there. Dobbins scares the hell out of me this year, but if something happens to Ingram, I mean, again, you've got a potential. That, that's someone who maybe to start the year you're going to be regretting it, but come the playoff times, if you end up getting into the the playoffs here, that could be a league winner. I don't I don't like that being your top two because Dobbins isn't even starting for sure. So that's a little scary. Hopefully you get somebody here with some value. I know you mentioned a guy before we were recording who might get you some PPR points. And, and this is where I'm at with Dobbins is I wanted DeAndre Swift. You mentioned him as well. I was like, he's definitely the starter in Detroit when it all kicks off. And I'm still another rookie, so sticking to strategy. I wasn't deviating. DeAndre Swift went pick 67. I had picked 70. I was heartbroken for a rookie <laughs> with no clear defined role in a team and system that I despise, the Matt Patricia. Yeah. But I wanted him so bad because I'm like, I'm, these, these are both 200 touch guys minimum, in my opinion, in, in Taylor and, and Swift. Likely much more, but mm-hmm. minimum. They're getting 200 touches on their team, and I'll take that given where I went with my other picks. So I settled for Dobbins at 70 because it was just another fall. I mean, there's just more guys went. I mean, shit, Damian sure. Williams got drafted before. Wow. I, mean, I, I Give me the upside of J.K. Dobbins because Damian Williams needs Clyde edwards Slayer to face plant sure. to return on pick 60 value overall. I'll, I'll take the upside of Dobbins, hopefully taking that Gus Edwards role, which was like 170 carries last year. And you give me Dobbins with 170 carries, he's probably threatening 900 yards and eight touchdowns. So that was at least my justification, John. So let me hear the team at 103 and your well, let me trash Hunter Henry because that scares the shit out of me. I mean, tight end seven, it's an okay value. I, if I recall correctly, when Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback in Buffalo, he peppered Charles Clay. So there, there's a potential there. And then, you know, they always, I don't know how true it is, but everyone likes to say rookies look for their tight ends. So if Herbert gets on the field, he might be looking for Hunter Henry. So John, get out of my head. It's my exact rationale for picking Hunter Henry. I don't. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor, Justin A. Bear, correlation. Yeah. Um, so in my league at the 1.03 third draft pick, this team, uh, again, I'll just go by position here. Got Garoppolo and Lamar Jackson, Kenyon Drake and Austin Eckler, and then went Mike Evans, our boy Kenny G, and Tyler Lockett. Yeah, to his point, Drake went at pick 14 overall 
in my league and Austin Eckler went to pick 18. So neither of those guys was available for me to take at pick 22. I mean, it just sh- goes to show you like how random these leagues are. I would have taken either one of those gentlemen in my sit with my second round pick, you know, so he went with Lamar Jackson. I went with Mahomes. I took Mahomes last year. It's funny. I was the 112 last year and had went Mahomes and I believe Josh Jacobs. And then Mahomes goes and gets hurt. And I have another 500 season in Scott Fishbowl. And, and then I go and take him at the 103 this year. So if, if for nothing else, I'm consistent, but I wouldn't have went to Sean Watson if either of those running backs were there. I mean, sure. it's just, it, they present with enough upside that I would have waited and taken a quarterback later because there's still guys that I think are decent quarterback values that are available right now. And we're in the eighth round. So I only went Watson because I'm like, maybe, maybe I hit on a QB one and two and it offsets my running back deficiency, but I just wasn't willing to take Todd Gurley, who was the next running back to go after my pick as my running back one. And then Chris Carson went after him. And then Clyde Edwards Slayer went after him. I, if any of those three are my running back two, I'm okay with it. I couldn't take him as my running back one. You know, so I just, uh, I went totally zero RB in the draft. <laughs> I mean, the the thing with going zero, like I kind of did it with wide receiver and and same thing with running back. If you pound the position and take nine in a row, I mean, I I feel a lot better than I I feel better doing it. You see a lot of teams that go zero, whatever, and then still with their later picks are mixing in the positions they took early. It's like the, the point of going zero, whatever, is to pound it later and give yourself so many fucking chances at hitting on, you know, you start three wide receivers. So if you're fading wide receivers, you need three of these guys to be playable every week. The, the guys that go zero and then don't really pound it later really, to me, screw their team quite a bit. Yeah, we're, we're we're rocking about three rounds per day right now in the Scrabble division. And my intent is to have this episode released by Friday, if at all possible. So I'm not going to try and give away too much in case we get to a... That's a- where I'm at too. <laughs> but I have a laundry list of guys that after the 10th round, I'm with you. I, I have to just draft running back. It doesn't matter what name is still there <laughs> at that point in time. I need to draft a running back in hopes that he hits, you know, like the names like Latavius Murray and Tevin Coleman, who I absolutely despise. But if everyone wants to think that Raheem Mostert is a guaranteed 100% sure thing, I'll take the lesser option in San Fran because it's any given Sunday. And then there's later, later guys. You and I both mentioned Tariq Cohen before we recorded. I have to take him. I I just have to. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not going to take him. I'm two picks away from my eighth round pick, not taking a running back there. So, so I'm truly sticking to the course. Right now, I think I wrote you in the, in the DM chat before, and I'm going to take Austin Hoop. And you said I already have Hunter Henry. I'm just going off script right now. I, I'm, I'm doing everything I said I wasn't going to do because of how this draft started for me. So I might yep. start three tight ends every week because I'm going to get Janu Smith too. That's, that's <laughs> it's been it's been decided before. That might I might just pre-draft him at the tenth round right now and hope that he falls there. But I might be rolling out a Henry Hooper Janu tight end to flex every single week and, and see what it does for me. You know, they uh they have upside akin to a top 10 wide receiver any given week. And truthfully, they have upside greater than, and not to take a shot at the guy who just got drafted, but Darius Geis, who went 91, who I was looking at, like he could be the running back one in Washington. He could fucking get hurt again too. And yes. they have Adrian Peterson there and they brought in Gibson, Ian Barber, and they drafted Gibson. Barber. Darius Geis isn't seeing 200 carries this year. I don't care how good he is. They're, it's not worth it for them to do it they're still going to give adrian peterson 100 120 carries at the end of the day nope. so the upside austin hooper greater than sign darius geis in, in this league to me so i'll i'll go hooper all day over guys even though my running backs are weak yeah I, I waited until the seventh to get my first wide receiver now my plan is to probably go eight picks in a row wide receiver and then i'm planning on taking three tight ends at the very end you will see my name on the latest tight end one is my master plan here and then that gives me like three or four picks to play around with if I get a value at running back or I'm not opposed to taking a fourth quarterback either if somebody kind of presents themselves at the end there. So I'm going to be pounding wide receiver. I mean, Sutton is my wide receiver one who was the 23rd wide receiver taken in my draft. I'm super comfortable with that. And if I get the guy I have pre-drafted at eight, if I can get... Who is it? Definitely coming out before. <laughs> Terry McLaurin. Okay. Um, Your boy. You know, I have two team wide receiver ones. With with wide receiver scoring being depressed, I I have two guys that are going to see the most snaps at the 
position on their team. So I'm happy with that. If I could get three of those, I, I don't know who I'm looking at in the ninth round yet. I have it written down somewhere, but just the list of names of guys who I would like to see be there. I'm, I'm very pleased with that because you start three wide receivers, two running backs, two quarterbacks, one tight end, and I think it's three flex spots. So Cook and Gurley are going to start for me every week. Singletary is a fine bi-week plug-in and Depending how they use him, I, I probably will have him in my flex from time to time. And then these wide receivers that are coming up, I, the list I have of the guys that are going to be available over these next few rounds, I'm really happy with. So it, it shook out, you know, people may look at it and dislike my team, which is fine. But this is the team I was trying to go in with. So I, I've been able to stick to the plan so far. And I'm just curious to see how the wide receivers play out in the rest of this draft for me, because I'm sorry, the tight ends, because I am, I'm not planning on taking one before the, the 19th at the earliest are you on your draft right now um yes who's the top tight end available as your eighth round pick comes up just curious <laughs> whatever based on rank or adp do it do whatever you want according to adp evan ingram evan ingram still it. wow i would be evan ingram hunter henry Tyler Higby, Austin Hooper, Noah Fant. Yeah, see, there's still a ton of names. I I would be hard pressed. I'd be hard pressed to pass up on Evan Ingram at in the eighth. To be honest with you, I just, have batted that around, but the thing that's starting to worry me with the Giants in particular is way there's suddenly they have a wealth of offensive options golden tate's gonna get a ton of shares slayton broke out last year sterling shepherd's still there you've got ingram barkley's gonna get a handful of balls out of the backfield didn't they bring in Deion lewis too who's gonna, nah, never getting on the field no he's not gonna cut into like barkley's share but he's gonna catch a few balls i'm pretty concerned about everybody in that passing game with the volume and if daniel jones is the guy that can supply that volume for everybody then just going by rank here just to give you some different tight ends uh jared cook is still available and blake jarwin back to higby again jack doyle ian thomas so there's lots of names there and honestly i I think what i had said same thing, going back to Shep's podcast I did earlier this week. I'd be okay with Jeremy Sprinkle and no, Tyler, no, Tyler no. Eifert. I would. No, no, you wouldn't because Jeremy Sprinkle was a starting tight end there last year and he didn't do anything. They, don't do that. You, you're better than that. Don't wait until Jeremy Sprinkle just to get your name on Scott Fish Bowl board for latest tight end. No, I just don't care. I, I trust <laughs> my abilities to stream – the whatever four tight ends I get at the end. All right. We're going to have a lot of tight end conversation during the year. Just, just put the name <laughs> Greg Olson in your notepad. Oh, he's on my notes too. Yes. Yeah. He's yeah. He's doing like the 15th round and he's going to be a top 15 tight end, probably higher in Seattle. If he stays healthy, he, he should get enough targets and first downs to be a tight end one. So he, right now he's ADP is two Oh three. That's just insulting. You know, to to Greg Olson, this is a seasonal league. You should be going a lot higher. So good for you. Stick to your guns. I would take Evan Ingram. Pound select on this next pick just because of the upside. Because what I found is you have to crush upside in this. You need consistency to a degree. You need to stack that average so that, you know, when you get to the playoffs, how that factors in. But you just need that difference maker. You know what I mean? I I am not just going for just cobbling it together. You know, I'm like – can this guy be the best at the position? Uh, yeah, well, that's, I think, that's, too, we had mentioned it with your your earlier picks. I, at some point, this does kind of turn into a DFS contest. So seeing guys like getting those stacks also become important, especially in the playoffs. Like if I had, if I ended up taking Daniel Jones at some point, I, I, Ingram would absolutely be my next pick. But without him, what was he? He was tight end seven last year averaged 16 a game Ingram was? per game yeah. yeah he missed a bunch of games yeah so his yeah. his average was seventh yeah i would have thought 16 would well yeah i guess because some of this these guys get jacked up how many games did he play we played 10 games I, I just turned it off but i think he missed yeah i played like eight or something missed about half the year yeah he was 0. 0.3 points per game behind mark andrews last year i mean yeah, I, I want that on my roster, John. I mean, just that. And he had a 1.6 point game in there 
Oh. I mean, Ingram is a Scott Fishbowl League winner. And you're just totally fucking disregarding him because you decided before this draft started that you were not going to take a tight end until round seven. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's not the reason to do it. Goodness All gracious. Right. You can't. know what? Here? I just, you pressured me into it, you bastard. I John, am he's, he was three points per game different than Kittle last year. Than Kittle. Three. Kittle went in the fucking first round in just about every goddamn draft. And you're arguing about not taking Ingram in the eighth round of your draft? Off 88, 88th overall. So he's <laughs> set. I've, I've set my pre draft to make you happy when he gets hurt. And I, I've got a fucking injury laden squad. That's what I've got. I'm either. If Listen, these guys stay what healthy. You have to be willing to do. You're yeah, right. That's, that's that's the the day. If these guys yeah. stay healthy, I I have a hard time believing this is not a decent fantasy uh, playoff come come playoff time team. <laughs> In about five minutes, I'm going to have the tight end three and the tight end eight in average points per game scoring in the fishbowl last year. And and I'm going to be looking for another one in the not too distant future. Because why? Because the upside's greater than a receiver. It is. I mean, like you said, there's so many receivers. There's so many. It's it's just insane how many wide receivers are viable and have been kind of tamped down in this scoring. Yeah, it, it, you can... The, the teams that I see that go like three wide receivers to start just because they like the guys, the names that are on the board, I just – I don't understand. I just shake my head. I'm like, what are you doing? Because – and I've done it in other mocks. I mean, and this isn't unique to this. Like you said, the scoring really shoots their value down quite a bit, and you're like, ooh. But even mocks I, I do for like DLF to set the ADP – that I've done enough now during the off season where, yeah, if you go quarterback early, if you go wide receiver early, good luck filling out your running backs as the draft goes on. It dries up quick. People are pounding that, especially running back. They're pounding yeah. it. Early. Listen, and- I'm a I'm a case example of that. I'm going to be chasing ghosts for the rest of this draft and running back. Listen, you, your boy, Cortland Sutton, your wide receiver one was, you said, wide receiver 25 in points per game last year in, in Scott, yeah. Scott Fishbowl, 13.58. My wide receiver one who I took in the third round, Tyreek Hill, was 10th at 15.5. Two points per game difference between those two gentlemen. Now, this is Tyree Hill's upside a world greater than Cortland Sutton's on a week-to-week basis? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. But the truth of the matter is that there was a two-point difference between 10 and 25 in the wide receiver scoring last year. And there's guys that are still available. Jarvis Landry's still available in my league. He scored almost 14 points per game in this scoring format last season. He's still available in the eighth round right now. He was a top 22 receiver last year, and he hasn't been picked. But he, well, A, the, their value fall might be, um, this is just a weird off season. You know what I mean? You're not getting the injury updates as time goes on. So you wonder, you know, if people are fading him because they're worried about this core muscle injury. By the way. I might draft him. Fuck it. By the way. <laughs> I just pulled up (laughs) Evan Ingram's ADP. And if I were to take him here at, what am I, 808? You would be the latest one to draft him so far. 88th overall, 804, uh, second to last. Someone got him at 812. All right. Well, here we go. I am officially on the clock. Ooh, this is a groundbreaking moment in a podcast in the Scott Fishbowl at pick 94. And I'm rushing up to the podium. (laughs) Take. My boy, Austin Hooper, who I had pre-draft, who I took down just so I could savor this moment of drafting Austin Hooper, who I hate. You know I hate Austin Hooper. I, I think he's one of the most overrated tight ends in the NFL. You know who doesn't think he's overrated? Cleveland Browns, Kevin Stefanski. And so much so that David Njoku is throwing temper tantrums outside of the stadium to try and get traded because he knows he just had his lunch money stolen by a slick fat kid from Stanford, <laughs> and he doesn't appreciate it. So, Austin Hooper, welcome to my SFBX team. Ooh, oh, I'm winning this whole thing. That's it. It just changed. It, Austin Hooper, paradigm <laughs> shift in my roster. Yeah, you you oh, have man. not at all stuck to your guns. You have no. I'm all over the place, and I, I'm I think I just talked myself into taking Jarvis Landry in the ninth round. So, at a boy, I've actually got. I'm I'm on deck. I'm waiting for our. 
our friend and one time guest of the show, Cody Garrett, is uh, on the clock now. And the funny oh, thing is, ago. I'm sitting here waiting for Cody to pick, so my auto draft goes through. The funny thing is, every Cody's picking obviously next to me, so he's ahead of me this round and behind me in the other rounds. He, <laughs> when I, I was on the clock for seven minutes one time, and he was DMing me, "Hey, you know you're up." He's like, "I'm just eager to go." So now I have to sit and wait for him for ten minutes. So listen. He's, Killing me. Uh, I don't know if you know Frank Scandoro. He's in our. He's in my league, and you know Frank took a little hiatus before going back to the Dynasty Happy Hour. And when we saw we were in the league, we've been chopping it up in the in the Scrabble chat. He has been an absolute bulldozer in this league. He is all people's ass. People are like mowing their lawn, and he's like telling them to stop, <laughs> like pull over <laughs> if they're driving. Like Frank just wants to go, and I was like, "Listen, I'm with him. I hate waiting. I just I, I get excited. I wanted to keep moving. I'm the one. I got. I forget what happened. I got bit in the ass last year because of a delay in someone drafting where like news broke. I forget what it was. Like whether it was luck retiring or whatever. Harry Hill? Wasn't a Tyreek Hill not getting suspended? That happened. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever it was. Like it, it snatched me. You know, like because like the slow draft where I'm like. Maybe it would have fell over. So I'm all for pushing. I don't give a shit if I if I if I pick before it happens. If it happens one pick before me, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind because <laughs> stuff like that can win you a league. And granted, Tyreek Hill got hurt last year, so he didn't totally spin the league, but he was a value when he was active, you know, at the end of the day. So you know what happens if Cam Newton news breaks in the fifteenth round? You know, you know what I mean? Instead of before. That yeah. All of a sudden, like, someone's like, "Holy shit! I just picked up a starter as my QB three, immense value." You know, when I when I waited. So yeah, I'm I'm there. I get anxious too. So I appreciate Frank because I don't want to be that guy, but I, I want to keep it rolling too. Like, let's get these teams pumped out. Like, I pick again at 99. I want the pick to happen already. It's five picks away. And I'm like, what's going on? We're <laughs> one, we're one arrest away. Yeah, from flipping the fishbowl on its head. You know, so. We got five minutes left because work is going to be calling me. Anything else of significance that you have gleaned from the Scott Fishbowl? Anything humor? I mean, anything? You know? Any like? Oh my gosh, this dude got drafted here. We want to talk about the Matt Barkley bet. You know that? Truthfully, I did not know about until after Matt Barkley was drafted. That uh, our buddy Shane and another gen, I think Mike Olivo, if I'm not mistaken, uh, were on the the potathon and said if someone drafts. Matt Barkley in the first round and makes the playoffs, they'll donate a hundred dollars to like the charity of their choice. So it wasn't an accident. Whoever drafted Barkley got drafted like two or three places. It's called the Matt Barkley challenge, which I think is awesome. <laughs> it's great. I wouldn't have done it because I still want to no, win. I think, at the end I, of the think, day. I think Barkley, I think Barkley, I think all those were fixed. I don't think no. they made him keep them at all. No, you can still have two teams have Matt Barkley still. He's in ADP. He's like the, the, Fourth ranked quarterback on Josh ADHD's that, yeah. QB oh, ADP. Still, still on one. two leagues. Oh, Shane yeah. took him. Yeah. Shane took him 111. So he did it as. So um, he's one of the two, you know, taking a shot, but another dude did it as well. Um, so it made its way back to to Matt Barkley at the end of the day who who tweeted it out, which, you know, good. Keep raising awareness. But the one might have been unintentional that I think. Somebody took him at 102, and that one yeah. clearly yeah. <laughs> mistaken is gone. Yeah. But the others, you know, and Shane. And I guess it had to be in the first round, so it can't happen anymore. But we we got two we got two gladiators out there trying to fight for Matt Barkley's honor. At the end of the day. I mean, look, that's a thing that happens. Though they did it on purpose for a joke, you know, mm-hmm. make some money. But you know, we you said last year Mahomes got hurt. It's not uncommon for these. Kelsey went in the first, and I think every draft you and I have discussed it. That this might be the the year for an injury for him finally. Kamara got banged up last year. So it's not like people don't shit the bed with their first round pick and still make the playoffs. So it's probably better to go into it and do it on purpose. At least you know you have to <laughs> fix your problems on the back end. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't avoid the injury bug drafting Matt Barkley in the first, guarantees that you do not win the Scott Fishbowl. It almost surely guarantees you don't make the playoffs. So yes, it takes all the competitiveness out of this league and makes it totally fun, which to each their own. I'm far too competitive to ever agree to that. I might, I'll donate $100 to a charity of my choice if I win my division. How about that? <laughs> Putting it out in the ether right now. I want to win. It incentivize me further to beat people. That's yeah. just going to get me out of bed in the morning. Not selecting Matt Barkley in the first round of a Scott Fishbowl draft. Sorry. I, I'm wired differently. If uh, Cody, Cody does not have a tight end yet. So if he looks just at ADP alone and he takes Ingram 
at 803, then I'm going to end up with McLaurin. You will get McLaurin in the next round. No, I I won't. I up his ADP. He has not fallen out of the eighth yet. Oh, you're, 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 too, you're, you're, you're soaking too much into this ADP of 120 different leagues. I, we just discussed how our teams looked staggeringly different just between two different drafts. That's why I'm not looking at that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to my board and realize at the end of the day, no one in this world likes Terry McLaurin as much as you do. So he's <laughs> meant to be on your team. So take Ingram. When, after you get McLaurin, screenshot it and send it to me just with those two picks, Ingram and McLaurin. And eight, eight eleven. Big old smile on your Where face when you do it. Falling. All right. This guy's an average. Uh, where's the average? Oh, it's not in his page. Going in what? the sixth, going in the early seventh. Those people are idiots. No matter who falls every, to me, it's a treat. Every, yeah, it's a every treat. one of those people are idiots. Terry McLaurin in Washington. He just had his best NFL season. So <sighs> I think Terry Slayton did too. You were talking That's about the Giants. I didn't get to drop a bomb on him. That dude, when like I forget who it was, when all the other guys were on the field, Darius Slayton disappeared. They that, he needed one of them to miss to, for him to be worth a shit. And I'm sorry, you don't, you don't think he played his way into a bigger role though? Not in this year, no. Ingram's guaranteed on the field. Shepard and, and Tate, I don't think are going to get supplanted by him. Yeah, you know, he's going to be in three wide sets. In my opinion, at the end of the day, but they'll probably run a lot of three wide because I don't think they're going to be a good team. But I, I don't think he can. And Grant. Kudos to what he did his rookie season. He's not coming close to even replicating those totals. But before we go, um, I did want to you know come clean on something that I was very ashamed of. And I just want it to be known because that's how we get better as people. I almost took Ronald Jones at pick 75 of the Scott Fish Bowl when I took the aforementioned Hunter Henry. And I said, if he makes it back to me in the eighth round, I have to take him. Luckily. Justin Bonema of footballguys.com saved me from myself and took him at pick 79 so that I did not have to be the guy who took Ronald Jones a year after taking Melvin Gordon two years ago. I, it was like deja vu. which struck me, and I didn't realize that Melvin Gordon was two years ago for me. It wasn't even last year. Was, do you realize that was two years ago? When we were yeah. Shit when, on him and I drafted him. And when were you going to take him? What round? When was this? I was going to take him at pick 75, realizing how – gutted tight right running back was in my league that still. a potential running back one that I could have gotten with, in, with my seventh round pick. He's still, still on the board in mine and we're at pick 86. Yeah. I mean, I would have taken him. I would have over Hooper at 94, which was yourself, Keyshawn Vaughn. T- uh, oh, I'm, listen, I am now full rookie running backs. I am going to be drafted Keyshawn Vaughn, Antonio Gibson, might get me a little AJ Dillon, you know, <laughs> in Blake case of Potter? injury. That, that, it's going to happen. No, oh, I'm taking Zach Moss next round. So we got that going for me. Fuck, fuck Jarvis Landry. I'm going Zach Moss. <laughs> All right, run us out of here. It's one o'clock. I'm about to get fired from my job. Stick to brand. Well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're uh, enjoying the Scott Fish Bowl. If you're in it, if you're not, and you're following along, and you enjoy everybody's uh, nonsense on Twitter. If you don't like it, feel free to mute, which a lot of people have done. But for the Fantasy Forty, I am John Debari, my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker, and the Sasquatch of the Pacific Northwest, Mr. Andrew Burke, and we are out of here. Ow! And yeah, if you don't like the Scott Fishbowl, then yeah, mute yourself from Twitter for a few weeks. Like, <laughs> it's a fucking great cause. What else are we talking about right now? You know, you, you, just because you're not in, don't don't be sulking in a corner with your bitter <laughs> beer face on. It's, it's just like, get over yourself. Like, you're right. You can mute whatever you want on Twitter, people. Don't lash out on people. Like clearly, the only people that are bitching about it aren't in the Scott Fishbowl because if people truly don't care about it, then they're probably not even following half the people that are tweeting the shit out. You know, yeah. so you like fantasy football? We're talking about fantasy football. Like, and like I said, you get to see a lot of people. Yeah, you know, you might watch ESPN and you you don't you've never played in a league with Matt Barry or Fabiano or these other guys from NFL Network. So this is a chance to actually see when the rubber hits the road what kind of teams they put together. Yeah, and not up or shut up time. Oh, I don't suck. Yeah, not up or shut up. Like you know. but oh I was gonna I was gonna say Burke clearly muted SFBX from his timeline <laughs> because he hasn't came out with a drunken rant where he's yelling at his dog or something <laughs> random in, in a few weeks. He's just putting love pictures up with his with his his wife that's way too good for him at the end of the day. So he's trying to be in a happy place and staying off the podcast so that we don't drive him to (laughs) insanity at the end of the day.